Hey, hey, what's going on, leaks, geeks, and returnees? It's that time once again, another installment to take a look at some classic tabletop RPGs, top secret first edition, or top secret one -y, whichever one floats your boat, whatever you like to say. And if this is your first time coming to the channel, well, I want to welcome you to RPG Elite. Yeah, y'all, this is the place where we put the RP back into RPG. And how do we do that? Couple different ways, few different ways, more than a couple. We do that by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture. The talk that, well, makes people feel just a little bit uncomfortable. And well, you know what I say to that? Life is rough, pray hard. Now, if you've been watching this series, I really highly suggest that if you're getting into Top Secret First Edition to go and grab a copy of the Top Secret Companion, which came out after, obviously, Top Secret First Edition. You cannot find this as a PDF or hard copy at any local retailer online. And when I say local, I mean, we're on the internet, so <laughs> anything that's online is local. You can't find it except like on eBay of somebody who's selling theirs. And I do have a link for you in the description below, but that link is only gonna work for one person. So if you're interested, link is down in the description below. Today, we're looking at Top Secret First Edition, dealing with contacts. We're gonna look at the different kinds of contacts, and then we're going to put my girl, Sarah Soda Hayen, and we're just gonna call her Sarah for short, we're gonna put her through the paces on how to deal with contacts. We're gonna use her as an example. And at the other end, I've got the question of the vid for you. So let's get straight into the video right now. And here we go. Three, two, one, roll them. Here we are in Foundry and we're going to do contacts today. Now contacts are handled in Top Secret 1E in an interesting way. Some of the information is vague, which allows you to have some leeway to use them in whatever way you deem fit. They are individuals which a PC agent can go to receive assistance through the provision of information, resources, or in their direct involvement. Contacts come in two main varieties the first is as someone the agent runs into on a mission so this can be anyone the newspaper vendor the cab driver or the retail desk clerk at the department store the second is someone they have worked or have some experience with in the past and the cool thing about contacts is that not all of them have to be cooperative I mean, if you want them to be, you can make it that way, but the way that the system works, maybe not so much. Top Secret 1E doesn't assign an agent any contacts or favorable contacts. However, the PC agents didn't just pop out of training fresh out of the womb knowing no one. I mean, they have connections. They've been in this for a little while, so they know other people who may be favorable towards them. So that immersion isn't broken. Making a couple of favorable contacts for each PC agent beforehand will ensure some good gameplay flow. Favorable contacts are NPCs created with all the primary traits filled in ahead of time. They will be recurring characters for the PC agents and a GM may be able to use them as adventure hooks. These contacts should be based on the PC agents background and their top two best traits. And you're going to find out why in a minute. The number of contacts can be equal to the tens place of the agents charm trait. Just drop the ones place and each should have a specific specialty that the agent can count on. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here on the screen. I have one that I created for Sarah. His name's Michael Allen Nichols. 
He's known as Big Man. Get it? Michael Allen Nichols. Oh, I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. I just kind of just kind of came into my mind and I was like, oh, that's cool. As you can see here, he has a specialty of streetwise. So he's the guy you want to go to when you want to know what's going down on the street. And yes, these rolls down here that I have, I actually rolled them. You can see them right over here. I just rolled them and just put them right in where I just went straight down the line, actually. Uh, oh, actually, he has a 13. Uh-oh. Let me put that. I thought it was 17. It's actually a 13 in Courage. All right. There we go. Now, instant contacts can be created on the fly. A contact created on the fly only needs one trait, and that's going to be the one tied to the method that the agent is using. And these NPCs have no bonuses like the PCs. You just roll percentile dice for each pertinent trait and then let the chips fall where they may. This will have an impact on when the agent wants to contact a contact. <laughs> Getting in touch with the contact is at the PC's discretion, but it must be done face to face. This is actually something that is in the core book. Now they can meet wherever they want, but it has to be mano y mano. Now this was created in the early 1980s. So face to face was probably the only real option that you had. However, since we're in 2022, there are a couple other different ways that you could use to get in contact with somebody, text messages, or even FaceTime with video. If a character agent chooses to do that, I would increase the likelihood of the contact being uncooperative if their disposition is anything beyond a D on the contact reaction table. And you'll get to know what that is in a second. There's something about being in the actual presence of a person that changes things, especially in espionage, body language and presence, all of that, it matters. So the PC agent can choose from nine methods on the contact method table. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Here we go. Now the method an agent chooses has a requisite trait connected to it. Once that method is chosen, it cannot be changed during the exchange or the meeting. So you have these nine and we're not gonna go over fool or bribe. These are two that has a subsystem mechanic that we'll go over in the next video. But you have things like force, which uses physical strength, which is basically extortion. <laughs> Fascinate, charm, you have Dazzle with coordination. You have Scare, which is Courage, plus the hand-to-hand -hand weapon value. We'll get to that in a second. And Scare is basically Intimidation. Impress is Offense. If you want to con them, it's Deception. If you want to lure them, it is Evasion. Now, if I pull up Sarah to look at what would be her best. Well, obviously, her highest two are Coordination and Courage. Those are the highest two. But in the case of Sarah, she is an assassin. So her charm is at 32. It's low. So she ain't going to try to dazzle anybody right now. She is going to try to scare them. <laughs> so she's going to use her courage plus her hand-to-hand -hand weapon value. Now, what hand-to-hand -hand weapon value are we talking about? Well, we got to pull up another table, which is the hand-to-hand -hand weapon value table. Now, remember, she has these throwing knives, right? And when she talks to people, she likes to twirl them in her hands. So if we're looking at throwing knife right here, you can see they have all these stats here, but the only one we're interested in is this last one over here. 35 she will get to add that to her courage and pulling her character sheet up again we see that her courage is 92 which means that she is going to have 127 as her trait value for courage or 
his, her scare tactic, basically. That's really good. 127 is really good. So once an agent connects with a contact, how helpful that contact will be is determined by consulting the contact reaction table. And depending on the method chosen by the agent, they compare the requisite traits to one another to get a letter result which corresponds to how the contact will respond on the contact reaction key. So let's let's get an example going here. So Sarah needs some information on a nightclub owner who's said to be funneling illegal arms into the area. And her job is to take them out. Now, they have been keeping a low profile on the streets until this major deal goes down and she needs to take him out before the deal goes down. Michael is her contact. Let me put her over here, over here. All right. She goes to him to get a current location on this target of hers, as well as get any other pertinent information that Michael may know. We have to compare his courage of 13, really low, to her courage of 127 because, again, she likes to twirl those knives in her fingers when she talks to people just to give them the hint that, yo, a sister is Cyrus. Know what I mean? We go on this side here, and I'm just going to move this over a little bit. So we look for her trait value, and we already said it's 127, so it's going to fall in here. We look for Michael's trait value at the top, which is 13 here. And if we go down here, we see that it's C that we need to look at on the contact reaction key. And so C says the contact will listen to the agent and will try to answer anything that the agent asks. <laughs> So she's going to ask Michael, hey, where is he? All the rest of that. And so I would role play or we would role play this out. So let's do another one. We're going to do another one with Sarah. And this time it's going to be an instant contact. And she's going to try again with her courage because that's, the, that's just how she rolls. And she's also going to be using her knives in this as well. So she's going to walk up to this dishwasher who's taking the trash out to try to find out if the contact which frequents the restaurant he works at is going to be there tonight, whether he has a standing reservation. So I don't know anything about this dishwasher, but I only need to know one thing, which is what is his courage. So I'm just going to roll and see. And the courage is 56. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the 127 and we're going to compare it to 56. And what do we have here? Uh, we have a D. If we go over here to D, the contact will listen to the agent and 50% of the time will try to answer anything the agent asks. So if she's walking up, twirling the knives in her hand, I would make a roll for the dishwasher. And he is afraid and so will answer whatever she asked if he has the answer. Because would the dishwasher really know if there's a standing reservation? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is a big time guy and, you know, they kind of announced that he's coming in or maybe not. Who knows? So that's the basics of contacts here in Top Secret First Edition. As you can see, very simple. Yeah, we got a few tables that you got to do some comparisons on, but it really is a simple, simple system. Now, next week, we're going to look at fooling and bribing because those are little subsystems within the system. But the main system is really, really easy. Hey, if you like this video at all, then go ahead and hit the like button for a brother give me a little bit of youtube algorithm love and if you like hanging out here then go ahead and consider subscribing hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell even though 
like I've said before in other videos, I mean, the notification bell is just re really weird thing. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then when it does work, it doesn't actually pull up the video that you thought that it was supposed to pull up. Very weird. If you want to hit the notification bell, do it. If not, well, don't worry about it. All right. Question of the vid. In the video, we talked about the different contact methods. There were nine of them. Now, let's do a little pretend. Let's say you're a secret agent, espionage, and you have the choice of a go-to contact method. Like this would be your favorite one, the one you like to use most of the time. Obviously you use some others in different situations, but this is the one, this is your go-to. If it was you as the secret agent, which one of those would be your go-to method? Inquiring minds want to know, so let us know down in the comments below. That's gonna do it for me, folks, and for those of you who've made it to the end, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Most people don't, but if you have made it this far, I come out with videos every Tuesday and Friday, so again, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button once again. But right now, Oh, I gotta go and make more videos, y'all. So, a brother has got to... So, so, until next time, God willing, take a look at these videos right here. And until then, a brother has got to say peace. 5,000 leets. Audi. Oh, and hey, grease.